Alright folks, so what we have here is a field guide to wild mushrooms and it uh, is regionalized for Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic and uh, I'm in the Mid-Atlantic and I think I've said that in some other videos and so what I wanted to do is just go through uh, this book, talk a little bit about why I bought it and kind of give it a, a quick book review I guess is the best way to say that uh, but before I do that, why don't y'all go grab a nice cold one, come on back and we'll get started All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. I picked this book up a little over a year ago. Um, I had been getting more and more into going out into the woods and mushroom hunting. One of the things I like to do when we spend a lot of time going out hiking and, and spending time in the woods and kind of just learning a little bit about trees and plants and wild edibles and, and mushrooms. And it's kind of fun to go out. Um, and as part of your hike, uh, you want to do some sightseeing. You want to you know experience different things. One of the things that uh, we like to do is look for mushrooms and see if we can identify them or collect them and bring them back to the house and then and then look them up in different field guides or uh, uh, or books where you can um, kind of figure out if it's an edible mushroom, what time of year it grows, and just all these different things. And it's kind of a fun hobby. So uh, as a result, I picked up this book, like I said, about a year ago, uh, specifically for the area that I live in. So. This book is by a guy named Bill Russell. You can see that right there. I don't know if it's the Bill Russell that's the basketball player. I highly doubt it, but I have not confirmed it. So anyhow, let's take a look and see what we got. And uh, what I did and what I typically do for these book reviews is I use um, these little post-it notes to kind of go ahead and uh, highlight or identify certain areas. So here in the beginning, you know, there's just a little bit of a warning about uh, eating wild mushrooms and how it can be a little bit dangerous and so I don't advocate that and I always say that you know when you are picking mushrooms or looking at mushrooms you should use a couple of different books to uh, identify what you're looking at and make sure that you have somebody that you can learn from like an, like an expert and that really helps out so I just wanted to point that out he also does a little bit of a forward and, and a preface um, about who he is and what his experience is and then uh, you know the book starts out with some mushroom basics and this is pretty handy because it talks about different things like how to identifying features. Um, my zoom is a little messed up here. Uh, uh, identifying features, and then uh, he talks a little bit about you know how mushroom love. I'm not sure what that is, so I'm going to skip over that. It talks about collecting and identifying them, uh, first steps, and then uh, here is kind of a map of North America and it shows kind of the region that this book is applicable to. Obviously, different temperate climates and uh, different regions will have different types of mushrooms and he goes over the different parts of a mushroom and what you look at when you're trying to do some identification and then what I really like about this book is it's broken into sections based off of time of year so it's really nice to when you're out in the springtime if you take a look at uh, at, at this section of the book let's see if I can zoom in a little better and uh, apologize for all of the uh, the changing of the picture what you can do is you can go through here and it, and it lists the different uh, mushrooms that you're likely to see during the spring and then it has some pictures here and and what I like to do before we go out is just as a, as a refresher just go through and look at some of these mushrooms so you kind of know what you're what you're looking out for and then um, as you find them you know you can go to picture and then here it like talks about these glistening inky caps and it gives you the Latin name and it tells you what page and you would go back to page in this case 29 and it would tell you a little bit about this mushroom in particular over here we have the next section which is summer mushrooms and what's really cool is, is that once I got this book I was able to go back and and look at look up the pictures and then identify what it, what we were finding as we were going out mushroom hunting and you learn a little bit about it and you learn a little bit more and you learn a little bit more and uh, really helps you kind of grow your skill set and uh, helps you know what you're looking for so here's a section for summer mushrooms and you can see this is this is a big section there are a lot of uh, summer mushrooms and What's exciting for me and why I got this book off the shelf is is that it's springtime, it's starting to warm up, we're starting to get some more rain. So I'll be going out and doing some uh, mushroom hunting and hopefully find some good stuff. And so here's the pictures of some summer mushrooms and we'll just take a quick quick look at a couple of different ones. And like I said, it, it's really handy. Now, the way they broke it down is by season, but that doesn't mean you won't see a summer mushroom in spring and you won't see one listed in spring during the summer. But these are the most probable ones you'll see during this time of year. Here's a mushroom right here, the uh, meadow mushroom. And, and uh, 
I find these in my yard all the time, in my buddy's yard. And so it's kind of neat just to be able to, oh yeah, I know what that is. And then uh, here's some more pictures. And I marked this picture page. I found a bunch of these one time. These are uh, chanterelles or cinnabar chanterelles. And I found a bunch of these black trumpets once. Or here they're called horn of plenties. But it's really neat to be able to find something, identify it, and look it up in the book. And as we continue to go through the book, here are fall mushrooms. And again, you got more detail. Let's take a, take a quick look at one of these detail pages. Let me zoom, try to zoom in a little bit. And it talks about what the cap looks like, the gills, the spore print, growth habits, if it's edible or not, and copycats. And a lot of mushrooms uh, look like other mushrooms. So, so it's really important to be able to look these up. And then as you look at the, co the copycats that might be listed, then you can go look at pictures of those, and then you can start to understand what the distinctions between the two are. Um, here's some more pictures of, of some fall mushrooms. Here's some honey mushrooms. I find these all the time uh, out in my area. So it's kind of it's kind of neat. And as we keep going, we get to winter mushrooms. Now you don't in the winter time when you go out and you go mushroom hunting, it's not as exciting as when you go in the spring. Or the summer, obviously winter, lots of things become dormant. But you do find mushrooms, and you and you can find a lot of them if you if you know what you're looking for. But you also find like dehydrated or I you say freeze dried uh, versions of the summer mushrooms that didn't get picked or eaten by uh, humans or wild animals, and uh, you'll see, you'll see them dried up. So it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of a I guess it's nerdy, but it's kind of a cool thing. And then here are some pictures of different ones that you can find. These velvet stems are pretty common in my area as well. So it's just fun to go out and, uh, and look at them, check them out. And I recommend that you, you, know, you get yourself a nice guidebook like this. And uh, this, this one's been really helpful. And then we're starting to get towards the end of the book. And this talks a little bit about edible, non-edible mushrooms. And then there's also ones that are not poisonous, but they're not edible because they have like a woody texture or uh, it's just... You, it's not something that you would that you would want to eat, so you can learn about that. And then towards the end, here's uh, mushrooms in the kitchen, and he goes over uh, cooking or eating some of the ones that you found, and here's some recipes that are in the back of the book. Now I, we find hundreds of different types of mushrooms around here, and uh, you know we'll, we'll collect them, we'll take pictures of them, we'll bring them back to the house and try to be. Uh, more accurate with identification, but one of the things I don't do is I don't eat wild mushrooms. Uh, I've seen plenty, and I've picked plenty, that I'm like, I think I'm going to eat this mushroom. But at the end of the day, I really just said, you know what, it's not worth it. If I want to eat mushrooms, I'll just go up to the to the grocery store <laughs> and, uh, and eat them up there or order a pizza with some mushrooms on it. Anyhow, just want to do a quick review, talk about this book. It's really great. I don't know if there's other ones for other regions in, in the United States, but uh, this is really handy, and I really like it. Thanks, everybody.